In our last video, Sam and I spent two days enjoying some outdoor adventures in Quebec's eastern townships, and this video is a continuation of that trip. After two days in Sutton, we drove to Montmagantic National Park, which was two hours away, though in reality it took us longer because we couldn't resist stopping for some poutine along the way. This trip was all about enjoying nature in the outdoors, and we once again teamed up with Tourism Quebec and Merrill Canada. We stayed in a futuristic cabin in the woods, tackled a few hikes, learned about the universe at Astrolab, and stopped at more than one roadside attraction along the way. Now here's a recap of that trip. Well, good morning and welcome to part two of our adventure through the eastern townships. Last night we spent the night at Parc National Montmagantic, where they have chalets yeah. in the forest and these aren't your average chalets they're kind of spacey and futuristic and each one of them is named after a planet in our solar system we ended up in mercury <laughs> so we wanted to give you a tour because this is super cool super unusual it's a one-of-a-kind accommodation and i loved it so let's head inside come on so first things first we have so many windows and yeah. so much natural light in here it's beautiful because you just look outside and you see nothing that, but trees and it is so green this time of year. Yeah. So yeah, we're like in our own little bubble in nature. And we had a nice little fireplace. We had some sofas. We had a beautiful kitchen. Mm -hmm. Like this is the kind of place where you want to come, you know, stocked up with all your food, all your meals, and you can spend the weekend here cooking. Yeah. We didn't really do that, but that is an option. Like they even have a coffee maker. Yeah. Um, and then I want to show you our bedroom. This is where we slept last night. So yeah, it was just two single beds and when you check in they give you a little kit where you have your bedding, you have your towels. Um, there's also heat inside the cabin so honestly we didn't need like a heavy duvet or anything like that. So yeah, it was super cozy. I slept really well. We slept nine hours. Yes, we did. After yesterday's adventure. And there is a second bedroom in this chalet. So if you come this way, there's like a metallic dividing curtain. Um, yeah, it's basically the same. Yeah, just two single beds. And then we had a nice little bathroom. Walk-in shower in here, a little toilet there. And then the sink was out here on the other side. And also outside we had a fire pit, a picnic table some chairs to sit on. Unfortunately, it's raining at the moment, but if you had better weather, you could totally hang out outside. All right, so we are hitting the trails here in Montmagantic bright and early. Bright and early, it's like an early morning hike. Yeah. It's beautiful, there's nobody here. Just the sounds of nature and we're yeah. walking right along a creek at the moment. I know. It's so peaceful. It's very peaceful. And we are seeing more autumn colors. Like we've yeah. been chasing these colors and finally we're starting to see more oranges and yeah. reds and yellows. It's amazing what a few days will do and we've also headed yeah. a little bit further north too. Yes. That makes a difference. One thing to keep in mind when it comes to hiking in this park is that it's divided into two sectors, the Franceville sector and the Observatoire sector. The Franceville sector is located in the northwest end of the park, which is where our cabins were, so this is where we went hiking. So it is super like wet and humid and moist in this forest. We can see lots of ferns and mushrooms growing, and you can breathe in that fresh air. How fresh is it? Wonderful. How fresh. <laughs> During our stay in Mont Megantic National Park, we also visited the Astrolab, which is an astronomy research center focused on making science accessible to the public. You see, our main reason for coming all the way out here was to do some stargazing. Mont Megantic is located in the heart of the first international dark sky reserve, and that means it's an astronomy lover's paradise. Because there's hardly any light pollution in the area, it's the perfect place to see and study the stars. However, fog and rain did put a bit of a damper on our plans. We did drive up to Mont Megantic to see the observatory and Mont Saint Joseph to see the chapel, but there weren't too many views to be had on that day.
Because stargazing wasn't possible that night, we went out for a nice leisurely dinner at Haute Trois Rouge. This is a country lodge with its own in-house restaurant and we got a little adventurous with our dishes. Well, it is dinner time here and today we're eating at this cozy little restaurant and they serve a lot of traditional dishes. So we have ordered up duck from Lac Brom, yeah. which is nearby. And they also have... Pheasant. I order? It wasn't pheasant, it was quail. Oh, quail, sorry. I have ordered the quail royale. So this isn't something I'd be able to have anywhere else. So we figured, why not? When in the Eastern Township, so that is dinner. We've also got some red house wine. So cheers to that. It's going to be a lovely dinner. Salut. So the main dishes have arrived. Like I mentioned earlier, I went for the quail, which is something that I don't eat very often. To be honest, I cannot remember the last time I had quail. But here we have it wrapped in bacon. My goodness, I can smell that bacon. Let's see how that I turned out. I can smell that bacon. Mmm. <laughs> oh, wow. Good? Super tender. Oh, my gosh. I forgot it is stuffed with veal. Oh. Uh -huh. The owner had mentioned that earlier. Mm hmm And I just got really excited about trying something new. I totally forgot. That is really good. Yeah? Mm-hmm. How about the sauce? Nice flavors. We've got some maple, of course. Huh. So the sauce is really nice and sweet. Maple for the win here uh, in Quebec. We've been eating so many things with maple. Yeah, and it I'm like, I'm not getting sick of it. Let me mm -hmm. tell you. And this just comes with some white rice. And we have some little steamed vegetables on the side. Really good. Very tasty. Very happy. Really excited for this. I've been wanting to try duck here in Quebec for a while. Yeah. This is my chance to do it. Um, check out this. I think I have a sauce that's very similar to yours. Looks like maple. It looks like maple. Hope it is. I've got rice and steamed vegetables. Da -da. So let's just get right into that duck. How is it? Oh, that's a really nice gravy. In terms of its flavor and richness, it's just delicious. Guys, there are deer sleeping on our front really lawn. Slow. Really slow. Deer on our front lawn. Oh my god. Out of focus now. One is standing. Two are sleeping. That's so slow. Two are sleeping. Are those rocks? No, are those rocks? Or are they sleeping deer? There's definitely one. Okay, those two are rocks, <gasps> but we do have a deer. Oh wow. Oh wow. Look at that. It's, it's running. Okay, so we were driving on our way to Montham, but then we noticed a sign for a covered bridge. So we've just pulled over to see what this is all about. I don't think I've ever seen a covered bridge in my life, so I'm quite curious. So it looks like this bridge is called Pont Macvetti Mackenzie, and it dates back from 1893. <laughs> Walking down a covered bridge. Have you ever been in one of these before? I have in New Brunswick. Oh! Yeah, it reminds me of something I got to do when I was a kid, to be honest. Yeah. So. You know, I always picture covered bridges as kissing bridges because in the movies they always show like the couples go for a little wagon ride <laughs> and they go through the wooden bridge and like sneak a little peck. <laughs> So that's what I think of. <laughs> so we've now walked out of the bridge and there's this beautiful lawn with picnic benches. Look at that, like right on the river's edge. This is such a beautiful spot. I wish we'd brought our lunch today because this would have been lovely. All right guys, so a bit of construction along the way, but we have arrived at Montam. We got our little tickets to hike the trail yeah. and we've also got this massive map here which basically shows you what we're gonna get up to so yeah. we're starting down here 
and there are several trails that will get you up to the summit, which is where we want to go for the views. Yep. They've told us this red one is the shortest, but the steepest and most challenging. Well, yeah. There's basically so, there's three levels. There's beginner, yeah. intermediate, and advanced. This would be the so. hardest. So they asked us, have you ever done this before, like this particular walk? And yep. since we said no, they've recommended either green or blue. Yep. So I think that's what we're going to do on the way up. And we've also got a little map so we don't get disoriented. Um, so that is the plan. Yeah, I'm looking forward to actually reaching the summit, seeing some colors. Apparently, once yeah. you get to the top, there are no trees. The, it's just a rock. The sun's starting so to peek out too. Finally, because it was raining this morning. Yes, so it was. So this is great. We're on our way. So one cool thing I've noticed along this trail is that they use tree trunks a lot of different ways. Like we have them as bridges, as stepping stones, and now we've got some steps here. Bit of a staircase in nature. The summit of Mount Ham sits at 713 meters above sea level, but it only has a prominence of 358 meters, so it's a fairly light hike. Well, Ooh. we haven't made it to the top. What did you think? Summited, amazing views. Yeah. Quite the workout. It was a real my workout. My. The hike got more challenging as we got further up the mountain. Yeah. And what was fascinating is when we first arrived up here, it's just unbelievable how it's all forest and just a few pockets of human activity. Yes. A few farms, a few random buildings, but mostly just forest. It's quite the view from up here. So we're taking a break on the way down. How are those new boots handling this hike? You know, they're feeling good. So these are Merrill's Sugarbush. I have to say, I feel pretty fashionable on a mountain. <laughs> um, they're leather. And actually, these are meant to be winter boots because they are salt resistant. Yeah. But yeah, we thought let's take them for a hike and they have fared pretty well. I'm feeling good in these. Feeling yeah. Happy. The thing I've noticed is they have really nice ankle support. And again, yes. they also feel so comfortable to wear. On our road trip through the eastern townships, we also took two little detours. The first was to Abbaye Saint-Benoît du Lac, which is an abbey known for its multicolored bricks and tiled floors. The second was to the Marais de la Rivière aux Cerises, which is an area with boardwalks and walking trails through marshland. Hi. And that pretty much brings us to the end of our whirlwind trip through Quebec's eastern townships. We hope you guys enjoyed following along and we'll see you in the next video.